From Bob Hunter's founding concept of the Mind Bomb, a story so powerful it ripples around the world, we're an organization with a particular affinity to story. We're all natural storytellers. Stories are so prevalent we forget they are stories. The days of the week don't exist in nature. Monkeys aren't happier on Fridays. Giraffes don't get the Monday blues. But think of how powerfully they impact our behavior and our sense of what is possible. Storytelling is also a path to change. The story Greenpeace tells, and has always told, is that a better world is possible, and brave individual and collective actions can make it a reality. This was the story we told when the Phyllis Cormac sailed out to stop nuclear weapons testing in Anchitka, or when activists ended up in a Russian prison for three months to stop Arctic oil drilling. Our job, every day, is to make that story come true again and again, and to challenge the forces that tell us we can't change the world. When we originally talked to the executive directors about this in late 2013, we thought the moral of the Greenpeace story was, a billion acts of rebellion can spark a better tomorrow. Conceptually, we were talking about rebellion in an abstract sense. You could read rebellion against the status quo, rebellion against consumerism, but it's a complicated word. It's loaded with associations. It met real resistance in China, but also in other offices. So we tried to strip it down to get to the real essence of what we as an organization stand for. And we revised the moral to this. The moral of a story is that idea you come away with at the end, which makes it all make sense. People from around the world joined together to declare Antarctica a world park. We saw acts of courage from activists spending winters there, but also from representatives to the Antarctic Treaty who faced down intense lobbying from the oil and minerals lobbies. A billion acts of courage can spark a better tomorrow. Nestle bowed to people power and agreed to stop buying palm oil from destroyers of the rainforest. When Nestle banned our video, people reposted it to their websites despite threats of copyright violation. People took the cause to Nestle's own Facebook page. A billion acts of courage can spark a better tomorrow. We don't need to say it literally every five minutes. It's not a tagline, but it should be a conclusion anyone can draw from any of our campaigns. There's a standard hero's tale which every culture, every language, every country shares. A hero sets out from a broken land, meets someone who gives them a powerful gift or wise advice. With it, the hero slays the monster, overcomes the obstacle, or conquers the enemy and is able to usher in a brighter future. It's the arc of stories as diverse as Harry Potter and the Bhagavad Gita. This form is hardwired into our brain because it served an evolutionary role. We learn from others how to overcome obstacles by projecting ourselves and our obstacles into the story. Let me tell you how I outwitted a bear. Listen to how your grandmother kept the fire going all winter. Stories like these shape our behavior and our definition of what's possible. This is the Greenpeace story arc and all of its elements. The broken world and the vision of the healed world will change from story to story, campaign to campaign. People power is always the hero of our story. The audience should be able to see themselves in the role of the hero, the change agent, whether they are powering Greenpeace or being called upon to an act of courage themselves. In our story, the gift we give allows people to find their own courage. We might be giving them hope or the kind of connection with others that enables courageous acts or the gift of imagining the possibility of a better world. In all these cases, courage is what results. The gift is what enables the hero to go on and to win. In Jack and the Beanstalk, the gift is the magic beans. In Star Wars, Obi-Wan's gift is a lightsaber. Yoda's is the secret of the Force. In Harry Potter, Dumbledore's wisdom aids Harry, Hermione, and Ron. The role we play is a hero among heroes. We enable warriors, but we're warriors ourselves. And the thing we help people find through our gift is their courage. The monsters we fight are numerous but they all resist change in the same way, and they all tell the same stories that constrain people's sense of what's possible. The monster of our story may be Monsanto, it may be the Indian government, it may be consumerism or the 1%, but the dialogue boils down to the following. We say, we can change the way we feed and fuel our world. We can live within Earth's limits. Nature can be our mentor and our model. We can redirect human ingenuity toward building a better future. We can find harmony despite our differences. We can build a fairer, more sustainable world. The monster says, change? That's impossible. 
It's too expensive. It's naive. It's impractical. It's being proposed by people who aren't like us. People who are anti-progress, anti-jobs, anti-science, anti-everything. People who hate our country. People out to overthrow our traditions. The monster story is paralyzing. It tells us there's no hope. Why bother? It relies on our feelings of disconnection from ourselves, from our community, from nature, and from time, leading to short-term thinking. The monster story requires that people not think for themselves, not imagine alternatives, not believe that a better world is possible. We can challenge the monster story with three simple potions. Hope, the renewed connections to nature, to each other, and to the future, which allow us to be more courageous, and the creativity to imagine a better world and turn it into a reality. Courage is the value that more people aspire to than any other. All acts of courage will be context dependent and deeply personal. Signing petition is not a brave act in Switzerland, but it is in China. My sense of what's brave may be very different from yours. Courage is stronger connected. Some acts of courage may feel like a drop in the ocean. Yet what is an ocean but a collection of drops? By acting together, we can multiply our impact and add up to something greater than the sum of our parts. Connection also enables courage. We will do things together or as a team that we would not do alone. Connection enables courage, makes it stronger, and concentrates its impact. Courage is powerful. Big or small, individual or collective, all acts of courage have value and hold inside them the power to inspire strangers and friends alike. Who's to know which act of courage will set off the ripples that transform into waves that gather into a mighty tsunami of change? We will recognize and appreciate the inherent value in all acts, even if we cannot understand them right now. And courage is contagious. We're already good at modeling courage. We need to become much better at inviting our supporters to go outside their comfort zones and amplifying the courageous acts of others. It was the everyday acts of courage, like his teacher allowing him and other activists to meet in her house while she watched for police, or the civil disobedience of those in Europe and North America who were arrested in front of embassies or joined the boycotts on South African goods that eventually brought apartheid down. It was only when people in large numbers came to believe change was possible did change become possible. Nobody will fight for a world they don't believe is possible. Half the struggle is getting enough people to believe, and we do that with the power of story. Telling a better story is how we win. Martin Luther King didn't tell people he had a nightmare. He told them he had a dream. We've always been very articulate about what we're against, and we have defined ourselves by what we oppose. If we're to take people with us on a journey into a brighter future, we need to be clearer about what we stand for and to help people imagine their role in making that world a reality. This is what makes our work different from marketing. Marketing tells people they are inadequate and sells them a cure. We tell people they are amazing and gave them gifts to apply that power to building a better world. When we ask people in workshops around the world what would be different about Greenpeace if we were truly living this story, we came up with these seven shifts. These are the North Stars by which we can steer. If we build our program to consciously drive these transitions and use them to help us plan, implement, and evaluate new projects, we will become the organization that we have the potential to become, one which delivers transformational change. The key to the story is that it contains a spine upon which stories from different national and regional contexts and different cultures can be told. The story can be told in any format to any audience, as a campaign video, as a children's book, as an about us page on a website, or as a manifesto. The broken world, the vision, and even the identity of the monster telling the stories holding us back can change from place to place and campaign to campaign. What remains constant are the values we espouse, the role we play, and the moral our stories reinforce. A billion acts of courage will spark a brighter tomorrow. The antidotes to apathy, cynicism, despair, are hope, connection, creativity. They can be the ingredients of a radically positive vision of the future, a story that can change the world. The more fun we have, the more optimistic we are, the more we believe in the power of humanity to change the world for the better, the more people will want to get on board, set the sails, and journey with us. Everything's got a story in it. 
change the story, change the world.